Our film starts on a spacecraft called the Churchill. We're told some stats on how impressive the ship is before we then see the crew referencing something being found on a radar that's 150 miles long. They decide to go take a look because, of course they do. They go in and find a bunch of shriveled up bodies and decide to take one back to Earth with them because that always works out well in movies. When they grab the body, a door with a massive light opens and the outside of the ship produces what can only be assumed to be a sunshade. They decide to go into the newly opened room because why not, and there they find people hanging upside down. They deduce that they aren't dead and are instead in suspended animation. After a scene of the men on the crew drooling over the woman, they put the paws with the bodies on the ship. A month later, Mission Control expresses concern when they lose communication with the Churchill. The United States sends the Space Shuttle Columbia up to intercept, and when they get to the Churchill, find the ship to be dark and abandoned with dead bodies floating everywhere. When they get to the storage bay, they find the bodies of the three naked people. Back on Earth, a bunch of science types debate on dissecting the body of the female, whose case apparently opened on its own while the other two remain sealed. When a guard goes to where the woman is, she wakes up, gets off the slab, and smiles at him. One of the doctors, with a video feed to the room, watches as the woman takes off the worker's protective mask, kisses, and then sucks the life out of him. By the time he reaches the room, the guard is just a shriveled husk. The woman then approaches the doctor and tells him to use her body. Apparently she doesn't take much because when the rest of the doctors get to the room, she's gone and the last guy is just worn out on the ground. They call security to make sure the girl doesn't get out. This doesn't work out too well considering the only security are bumbling idiots easily distracted by boobs. She makes short work of them with hand lightning while the smart one who looks like the Maytag repairman decides he wants none of that. She just walks calmly out of window. She breaks through. Eventually the military get involved and they look over the shriveled husk of the first victim. The general named Kane interrogates the doctors regarding the hows and whys of an alien being brought to Earth to do what happened. The doctors he speaks to, whose name is Falada, explains they told the media a false story, but in reality, the crew died in a fire that may have been set on purpose and one of the escape pods was missing. He then goes on to explain that the human life force is a thing and the girl feeds on it and is in the form of a human to make it easier. Back at the room with the two males, they break out of their chamber with an explosion. The military uses guns and grenades to stop them because this is a movie about a hot lady vampire and they don't need to be in the way. In another room, they go do an autopsy on the first victim and his husk comes to life and makes funny noises. It looks like he just wants a hug, but then he sucks the life force out of one of the doctors, resulting in the doctor shriveling up and the guard going back to normal. They grab the guy, give him a sedative, and place him in an isolation cell. They decide to contain all the bodies of the victims. They then get a call that a husk of a girl was found in a park. A witness fingers the naked alien woman as the culprit. Back at the base, the guard is freaking out. He begins making weird noises before shriveling up again. Dr. Falata uses his powers of advanced deduction to assume if they don't feed every two hours, they will die. In another cell, the husk of the pathologist that was his victim gets up and attempts to attack them just to explode into dust when he hits the door. They then go and watch the husk of the female victim at the park flop around before she explodes. They then get noticed that the Churchill's escape pod has been found in Texas. The military finds it with one of the shuttle crew still alive. He is brought back to the talk to the group investigating the vampire, where he tells them about how everyone on the ship was being killed one by one, so he used a torch and some oxygen tanks to blow the ship and escape using the pod. He then talks about how difficult it was to do, literally, as his thoughts were controlled by the woman. We then get a dream sequence where the vampire woman seduces the ship's lone survivor, whose name is Carlson. He wakes up screaming like all the guys do when they dream of hot naked women seducing them. Anyway, he wakes up in a cold sweat and tells the doctors who come in that she was contacting him and it wasn't just a dream. They suggest he go under hypnosis. When they hypnotize him, they use him to find her as their minds are connected. He explains she's in the body of a girl named Ellen, looking for a man to feed on but not kill. We then see her in the Ellen body seducing an old guy before the astronaut snaps out of it. They end up finding Ellen, who has no memory of what's going on. The astronaut smacks the woman around a bit, yelling at the vampire to come out, leading to a kiss and her losing consciousness. Through that, he now knows where the vampire is. The description is a criminal in a psych ward, and the doctor in charge insists in being involved in whatever is going on. When they get into the room with the criminal, they then go after the doctor instead, injecting him with something. They Professor X him with a wheelchair into a private room to question him. We then find out the astronaut has the ability to read the minds of anyone the vampire is fed on, which is how he knew not to trust the psych doctor. Eventually she talks to the astronaut through the doctor and explains that he is the one she's looking for. She explains that they don't have an actual form and her looks come from what his ideal woman looks like. The astronaut freaks, screaming at her to let him go and nearly goes in for a kiss before things start blowing everywhere until the psych doctor is given more sedatives. The astronaut tells them they're too late and the vampirism has already spread. They then take a helicopter back to London. 
While in the copter, they get a message from Dr. Falata, who says that the original male vampire didn't die, they just switched bodies with the soldiers who attacked them. But he killed one of them with a metal object, just below the heart, which is the only way to kill them. He tells them only the original three can switch bodies, and that these creatures are where the legend of the vampires come from. We then see a red blob come out of the psych doctor's body, which turns into the woman, then disappears. The astronaut Carlson then confesses to the general the truth that he had an affair with the alien on the ship, and basically this is a fatal attraction situation, and he was actually trying to cover it up by destroying the Churchill. They then get a news bulletin of London being in turmoil, with people attacking one another. They head down to talk to the Prime Minister, who seems very flustered. He pretty much ignores the two and instead calls his secretary into his office, and when they peek in on the two, they witness him feed on her. They then run back to the helicopter. They fly to a military checkpoint where they try to get in touch with Dr. Falata, but they're told they must be quarantined for two hours. Eventually, they're let in and are told that if the situation can be brought under control, they will have to nuke London. All the while, the ship the Churchill found is in Earth's orbit, collecting the human souls being drained through the female vampire. We then see her laying on a concrete slab, calling Carlson. He explains she needed him to assimilate to a human, which is why she kept him alive. Eventually, he takes off on his own, and Colonel Kane goes after him. Eventually, Carlson finds her in a cathedral with a bunch of bodies scattered around, while Kane finds Falada at the Space Research Center. Falada tells Kane where Carlson is, admitting to Kane that he has been turned. Falada goes after Kane, but gets shot. Falada then really politely announces his soul is going to leave his body before exploding into the blue energy. Kane heads out of the building just before other husks wake up and go after him as he looks for Carlson. Meanwhile, Carlson finds the woman. She explains it was always meant for them to be together. When Kane finally makes it to the cathedral, he's stopped by the last remaining male vampire. Kane stabs him with Falada's sword, which turns him into a giant bat creature before he dies. He eventually finds the girl in Carlson. She explains to Carlson that he is one of them and has always been one, which is why he has such a connection with her. Kane throws the sword to Carlson, who uses it to impale he and the girl together. The film ends with their souls getting sucked up into the ship and the ship leaving. Thanks for watching. If you like these recaps, please leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to know every time I update. There is now an option to be a channel member where you'll get access to exclusive recaps from late night vampire catalogs like Showtime, Cinemax After Dark, USA Up All Night, and much more. If you want to help my channel grow, please check out my Patreon where members can get exclusive content that can't be uploaded on YouTube along with download options. Link is in the description.